Okay, so here's our job for today. Let me see if I can bring you around here. We can kind of see what we got going on. Um, we are touching, it's hard to tell, I'm sure, but the top of the header is touching the tub right there. And if you look in there at my body washer right here, there's a gap between it and the tub. So I'm about at least half to three quarters of an inch too high with this header for the tub to drop down and sit on that thing. Now, there's not much adjustment or any that I can see in my motor mounts here. These, this, the bolts that went through this piece were just through two holes, straight through the holes. They're just holes, round holes. And same up here, there's no adjustment on where it bolts to the block. And as near as I can tell, there's no adjustment where it bolts to the frame. However, I'm going to loosen the whole mess up and see what happens. If we come over here to the passenger side, much different situation. I got plenty of room. I am sitting down on my motor mount or my body mount and I got room between the header and the tub here. So I've measured roughly from frame to outside corner. And same over here from the inside of the frame to the outside of the corner, about 15, 15 and a quarter inches or so there. So I think we're pretty well centered now with the tub. And if we walk around to the back here, our rough alignment is we got this line lined up with the frame and same. I might be a little tiny bit off, but pretty much Got to believe that we're centered. Now, if we come up here and look at our hole, if we don't have a ton of room for our twin stick. I can see the post. If I'm looking straight down, I can see that too, but obviously this is not going to work. So when I'm just eyeballing this, it still looks to me like the back of my transfer case. It's got to go that way a little bit. I'm just straightening out the last of a bottle of gear lube into the thing, but it does look like this feels like it needs to go that way a little bit. And back up here around the front, when I'm measuring from this frame rail to the center here, I'm about 12 inches. When I'm measuring from this side over, I'm about 13 and a quarter, which makes me believe I'm three quarters of an inch or half an inch too far to this side, and I need to go that way. Again, not much room to adjust there is room to adjust on this side it looks like I can pull this this frame or this bushing up in this body mount a little bit this side however looks like it just wants to sit there so these are the original body mounts or engine mounts for this thing and I found the old bushing and tried to make sure that my bolts all lined up and that I wasn't putting them in wrong there's only one way they'll go, and so it's not that my bushing is incorrect. Perhaps it's that my bushing is a little bit thicker than the original. So the, maybe the thing's not sitting down in deep enough. So that's my conundrum today, is to mess around with this a little bit and just see if I can fine tune this alignment. All right, well, let's check in on our progress here. So. This is the bubble, the level sitting on the frame. Pretty good, pretty level is how we're sitting on the ground. Now if we come up here to our carburetor body, throttle body, pretty good. It's about as good as we're gonna get it. So I have um, basically 
what I did is I loosened everything up. I picked this up with both the jack and the engine hoist, moved this mount to the top of the slot that I had over here, tightened that down, and then tightened everything else up and let everything kind of settle down in place with that. So let's check our clearance here. We are still sitting on that header, but now, what I'm going to look at is potentially dropping down that cross member a little bit. Maybe put some half inch spacers or something in there. Get me a little room back here. I didn't want to do that. And I know I could have ordered that, that cross member in a, with an inch drop or a half inch drop or something like that. In retrospect, maybe that's what I should have done. But I, I think we're gonna have to live with it the way it is so again I'll just drop it down do what was there before there was some spacers between the frame and the cross member so I'll probably do that now and see if I can get myself enough clearance on this header to at least have the tub sitting back on the frame properly which I gotta have so I still gotta gain about three-eighths of an inch or so so I think if I drop the cross member down a half an inch that should Kind of get us there. The way I'll test that is I'll put the jack under the cross member and support it. I'll back my bolts out a little bit, let the cross member settle down a little, and see how we look. So that'll give me some idea of what size I need. It might even need longer bolts there, but we'll see. But anyway, progress is being made, albeit somewhat slow, but we're cruising. All right, well, this oil pan got abused while I was putting the engine in the frame. So, taking it off, and I'm going to give it a little bit of sanding in these spots just so we don't spot them as a big gouge. And then we're going to paint this some more. Can't have that. Okay, well, I think I remember hearing somewhere that when Elon Musk first started building Teslas in his factory there, he'd have to spend the night in the factory a couple of times as they were struggling with kind of the proper order of building everything and things weren't going well. Um, I've had a little bit of that myself here. I'm not spending the night out here, but what I found was there is a, with some of these components, there's an order to the proper way, you know, things have to go in in the proper order. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we look up here, we have this innocent looking little dipstick pipe that your dipstick goes down and through and comes out down there in the oil pan. Well. There literally is not enough room between these header pipes to twist and turn that curvy thing around and get it in that hole down there at all. It just can't be done. So I have now taken this header off, got that tube back in there, bolted the header back on. There we go. So let's touch bases with where we're leaving the rest of this stuff. You can see now, if we look at my bubble closely, I'm as about as level as I'm gonna get. And um, what it took to do that was, let's pull the light over here. Okay, so this motor mount bushing, this motor mount itself has slotted holes in it. So what I did is I loosened everything up as much as I could and I, slid that thing up as far as I could get it in that slot and I tightened the bolts down to hold it up as high as it would go. And then I lowered everything else down and tightened everything else up because that's the only adjustment you basically have is that one set of holes right there. I still feel like the center here of the crankshaft is about a half an inch too far that way. I simply don't understand how I could possibly move that back over. And when I was back there underneath in the transmission area, measuring the transfer case output shaft, I feel like it's not exactly on center line either. But then when I, so I felt like it needed to go one way or the other. But then when I got back there and I got it where I thought it was in the center and I looked back at the differential, then the differential looks way off to the side. So, um, this alignment thing is more, there's more to this obviously than I'm getting right now. So here's what's next. 
more tape measure work. I'm gonna get back underneath there and I'm gonna measure the distance between the frame rail and the inside of the tires on both sides and see what that looks like because that should tell me if the differential is centered. Now, how it could not be centered, I don't know because when you, when you put your differential in your leaf springs, there's a pin there that goes in the center hole of the leaf spring thing. So that, you know, I mean, there's a little bit of play, but there's not like, you can't have it inches out from center line. So I don't know, I'm a little confused about how all this is gonna line up. But um, I think I do have to put a wrapper on this for now and I wanna get the thing slid back over and stuff because I do need to put the car inside here for tonight. So I'll do that. I have um, painted up my oil pan and while I was throwing some paint around, that bracket right there is part of the power steering bracket that goes right here through these bolts when I hooked that up. So I wanted to get a little paint on that. And um, so I got stuff drying. I, will, I bought a new set of gaskets for that. So I've cleaned the gasket face off. That's all ready to go once the paint cures a little bit. So yeah, there we are. Um, not the most exciting day in the garage here. A lot of just frustrating kind of work and feeling like I was doing stuff twice. But at least I'm done for now. So I'm gonna leave it now and come back later. All right, well, I couldn't really bring you with me into the Jeep. There's not much room for both of us. So let me show you what I did. I have another one of my wonderful artist renditions or artist renderings here. So this is looking forward on the Jeep, okay? So passenger side tire, driver side tire. From the inside of the passenger side, the inside of the frame rail looks like about two and an eighth. It's a little dark in there and it's tough to get the exact measurement, but about two and an eighth there. Over here on the driver's side, about two inches. So if anything, maybe I'm off a sixteenth of an inch. Could go that way a sixteenth. However, from the inside of this sidewall to the center of the yoke is 20 inches. From the inside of this center sidewall or inner sidewall to the center of the yoke is 22 inches. So that makes sense. You figure that if we grab my pen here, if we consider what's going on inside of our drive shaft, this is our pinion gear, which is turning our ring gear. That's kind of offset to the side a little bit. So that makes sense why that's not exactly centered in the vehicle, the yoke itself. So now what I need to do is I am trying to make sure that I get my drive shaft nice and straight in line with the frame rails. So I think the way that I'm gonna do that is I think I'm gonna pull the old 45 degree in the garage thing again. I'm gonna back the car out, pick the tub up again like I did with the engine hoist and my um, ladder system. And I just wanna be able to get under there and maybe even stretch a string from that front cross member to the rear differential on what I believe is the center line of the differential or the drive shaft. And then figure out where the back end of my transmission and transfer case needs to be to meet that alignment so I can have my drive shaft nice and straight. So I don't think I'm gonna get that done today. I've been traveling a ton. I had to go over to Colorado for a couple of days and um, been out of town this weekend and there's a Formula One race that I'm behind on and whatnot. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave you dangling, sorry, but um, on how, how we're gonna get things lined up. But this is just the fine tuning part. So this won't, this won't be earth shattering. I'm sure many people have thought of this before. In fact, I may go consult my Jeep Rebuilders Bible over there in the corner and see what it says about driveline angles. And then go from there. So um, don't go anywhere. We'll see if we can get this thing lined up.